What's up, guys? I want to address a question I got the other day on YouTube, and um, it's uh, about low carbohydrate diets. And it was posted on a video that I made suggesting that low carb athletes actually have a sort of an, uh, sort of an advantage. And the argument I was making here was that if you've been fat adapted for a while, and you have a really high activity day then you can definitely add carbs into your diet right and if you look at you know dr jeff bullock and stephen finney's book the art and science of low carbohydrate performance or if you look at dr dominic diagostino's work um it all suggests you could probably eat up to 150 grams of carbs a day if you're glycogen depleted and remain in ketosis right it's pretty cool and the, the advantage there is that you're able to gain the benefits of both. You can gain the benefits of carbs and fats, right? You can still burn ketones, uh, giving you sustained energy, and you can replenish your glycogen with carbohydrate when you need it, right? And I have to say, after a day of hitting the weights and then maybe going out for a run and then going out and rolling jujitsu at night, you know, I like to come home at the end of the night and, and have me a bowl of rice or maybe a slice of sourdough bread. I like sourdough bread, it's fucking delicious, right? Um, and uh, the, the thing is, um, you know, people take things out of context and it's no fault of their own, this is the way human beings think, but they like to see these kind of meme wars here on, on YouTube. And uh, I'll go into the question this person asked me right now. He said, are you aware of Dr. Lane Norton's recent studies proving that low carb diets don't work any better than the standard or high carb diet as long as protein and fiber are proportionate? Um, and yeah, I am aware. I'm very aware and we've been saying this all along, but you get a couple of things wrong. Um, first things first, Dr. Lane Norton did not publish these studies. And I have to say that despite all the hate you know, it, it, it's cottage industry right now and in YouTube to hate on Lane Norton. I got a lot of respect for Lane Norton. I have a lot of respect for Lane Norton. And the reason why I have a lot of respect for Lane Norton is because even though he doesn't think that low carb, high fat dieting is the way to go, he's not going to go out there and say that it doesn't work because he's looked at the research and it does work. He knows it works. And he's done some amazing videos clarifying his stance on low carbohydrate, high fat diets. So let's clarify what Dr. Norton was saying. The first thing he was saying is this, all you people out there who are claiming that the ketogenic diet is some kind of magic, stop, stop. You know why? Because if you control for protein, and this is where you screwed up also, protein and calories, Right? If you control for protein and calories, there is no study out there that demonstrates that the low carbohydrate, high fat diet is better than the standard carb diet at burning fat. Right? So when protein and calories are controlled for, meaning that they're the same across all other variables, there is nothing to prove that the ketogenic diet burns fat any more effectively than the standard carb diet. He's not saying that the ketogenic diet doesn't work. And I have to respect him for that because um, he's trying to straddle this area between academia and YouTube, right? There, there's academia over here where people don't talk about proving anything off of a single study, right? They don't talk about proving anything off of a single study. If you actually know scientists, and uh, I wasn't a real scientist, but I was a social scientist of University of California at Santa Barbara, and I studied quantitative methodology and uh, uh, game theory and international politics. Can you believe that? I'm here talking to you guys about fitness. Um, uh, you know, that's, that's my background. And if you know people in the scientific community, anybody who says they've proven anything off of a single study, they're probably a pretty bad scientist, right? But Dr. Norton hasn't done that. Nobody's proven anything off of a single study. You have to spend years you know, demonstrating something over and over again, right? And that's why I get a kick out of people who are not scientists here on YouTube saying that this proves this, proves this right? There's nothing that proves anything. There's no piece of anecdotal evidence that can prove anything, right? 
um, you have to, you know, have controls in there. And what Dr. Norton is saying is that, you know what, when we control for these things, you know what, the, the, the ketogenic diet is no more effective than the standard carb diet uh, at burning fat. They both burn fat, but when you control for these things, there's nothing to suggest so, right? So that leaves open the question, um, why do I do a ketogenic diet? Why do I advocate so hardcore for it, right? Um, and my point is this, we've spent the last 60 years looking at carbohydrates as a central tool or a central nutrient in our diets, right? Um, and somebody comes along and they demonstrate that, wait a minute, all right, maybe it's not fats that are making us fat. Maybe it's uh, an overconsumption of calories. Maybe there's this thing called insulin resistance that's going on in some people, right? where they could actually benefit from lowering their carbohydrates and, and raising their fats, right? I think that's a pretty sensible thing, right? And so there's so many people out there who are uh, brainwashed into thinking that fats are bad, right? And so here I am, I'm coming out of left field talking about why fats aren't necessarily bad and why they can actually be a pretty good source of energy depending on how you construct your diet. Remember, the, the diet par the paradigm does not make the diet, right? You could be keto, vegan, anything, and you could be doing a, a bad diet, right? Um, if you're uh, consuming too much, if you your food is not micronutritionally dense, and if it's not digestible, those three things, right? It doesn't matter if you're consuming nothing but fats, your diet's crap, right? It doesn't matter if you're consuming nothing but um, uh, vegan food, right? If you're out there just eating, you know, hydrogenated bean burgers all day long and not consuming green vegetables and not seeing to your digestion and consuming too many uh, uh, hydrogenated bean burgers or other things, then, then your diet's not healthy either, right? Even though the vegan diet is widely considered to be one of the most healthy diets out there, there's definitely wrong ways of doing it, right? So the paradigm doesn't make the diet. Um, but uh, the reason why I do the ketogenic diet is one, because of that, but two, because there are some definite benefits to doing the ketogenic diet that don't just revolve around fat loss, right? Now, one of Dr. Norton's arguments is that he doesn't think that the ketogenic diet is sustainable. Um, and I have to say that that's his argument as a practitioner, right? As somebody who's experienced with working with clients, it's not his argument as a researcher, Right? So that in and of itself wasn't a scientific statement. I don't think he's saying that either, but it's his opinion that it's not sustainable for the long term. Now, I've been doing it for years, and my point is that it's actually been a lot easier for me than a lot of the other types of diets that I've done out there. And I've done everything. I've done veganism. I've done a standard bodybuilding diet. I've tried if it fits your macros. I've tried everything, right? And if it fits your macros, isn't really a diet. It's just it's it's a protocol, right? For counting your calories, counting your macronutrients, um, and people mistake it as some other thing, right? You could probably do if it fits your macros or flexible dieting with ketogenic dieting very easily, right? You probably do it with anything. And again, people confuse these concepts. But I've been doing the ketogenic diet for years. Um, I've been following 80% fats, you know, anywhere from 70 to 80% fats, um, to 10 to 20% protein, to 10% carbohydrates. And like I said before, I like to throw in some carbs every now and then. Probably even, you know, sometimes when I have a lot of activity, you know, I'll probably even throw them in a couple of times a week, you know, if I've had a really high activity day. But, um, you know, I've sustained very well being fat adapted. Um, my brain feels a lot better because I'm not ever worrying about starving myself from glucose. Um, I'm beating off of my own fat stores, which means that my fuel supply is a lot more steady. And, uh, you know, I'm able to be better at things like endurance. I'm able to do things like roll jujitsu. Right? And I'm able to lift weights. And sometimes I'm able to do all these things in the same day while not having to eat a gajillion times a day because my brain is starved for glucose. Right? Um, I, 
like I've said, have eaten uh, two meals a day for a few years now. Sometimes I've only gone to one. Um, but you know what? And some people poo-poo that, but it's worked for me, right? And it's worked for a lot of the other people I'm saying uh, that I've seen. Now, here's the other thing, and I want to end this video because it's getting over 10 minutes now, but um, I, I applaud Lane Norton for calling out people who are saying that this is magic. It's not magic, right? It's a tool that you can use for burning fat and it has some benefits. And Lane even talks about those benefits in a video he used to clarify himself and I'll post that below. Um, but, you know, while I have respect for Dr. Norton, there's some other people out there who are trying to flat out say that the ketogenic diet doesn't work and that it won't work for athletes. And they're saying that there's no coaches that use the ketogenic diet, right? Well, here's the thing, guys. Um, those of you who are saying something like this, uh, one, you haven't looked at the research, right? And there's a difference between, you know, questioning the research and then, you know, bending the research for your own opinion. Um, and uh, there's certain people out there doing that right now, bending the research for their own opinion. Um, you know, when I talk about Dr. Jeff Volek's team out of University of Connecticut and the, the recent study they did. Sorry guys, my camera went dead. And if you look at that um, study from Dr. Jeff Volek's team from the University of Connecticut, um, it actually, like I said, demonstrated that uh, the low carbohydrate, high fat athletes who participated in the study, they were separated, separated into two groups. And I'm talking about this over and over again. The low carbohydrate, high uh, uh, high fat athletes were actually performing as good or better than the high carb, low fat athletes were, right? And uh, they actually demonstrated better glycogen retention than the high carb athletes were. And you know you can say what you want about anything, but the scientific research is slowly demonstrating that high fat, low carb diets are a viable alternative to a standard carb diet. And the anecdotal evidence is suggesting that it might be more convenient and might be easier to do, right? Um, and it's important that we separate that notion, the, the difference between uh, scientific evidence for how something works and the, the anecdotal evidence that we see for ease of use, right? Um, and I'm on the side of, you know, let's be honest about what the science says, but, you know, let's also look at, um, you know, a realistic view for how sustainable this is. And I think it's perfectly sustainable. Um, but, I, you know, anybody who says that it doesn't work is sticking their head in the ground and, you know, either ignorant of the research or, you know, just trying to stir up controversy here on YouTube, um, which I think there's a lot of going on right now. You know, and to say that there's, there's, you know, a lot of people say there's no coaches using it. Well, guess what? It's a new concept. It's going to take a while before coaches actually start to use it. Um, and what you are seeing is a lot of people going and trying the ketogenic diet and gaining a lot of benefit from it. Um, so, you know, you've got Mark Bell who's doing it, his brother Chris Bell, who I had on the podcast, and we talked extensively about uh, ketosis. You have, you know, Joe Rogan, you have Tim Ferriss, um, and neither of those guys are intellectual slouches. You know, uh, Joe Rogan's talking to scientists all the time, and so is Tim Ferriss. Um, and I don't think that anybody's trying to say that the ketogenic diet is quote unquote magic. Uh, and if they are, they're wrong. It's, it's not magic. Um, you know, and, and uh, if we're looking for coaches who are using it, um, you know, you take Brent Ben Greenfield, for example, who's widely considered to be one of the best trainers in the world, not just some YouTube schmo who comes on and talks about fitness. Um, you know, Ben Greenfield is constantly extolling uh, the benefits of a high fat diet. Um, you know, and he's not always keto, he doesn't always go keto. But, uh, you know, he's definitely been talking about the benefits of a high fat diet for a long time. I've also had Ben Greenfield on the podcast. Um, and I'll, I'll link all that stuff below too. Um, you know, and, and uh, you know, if you want somebody who's a very performance-based person, 
who retains a lot of muscle mass and does a ketogenic diet, you know, look at Jocko Willink. Um, he is uh, the former con commander of SEAL Team 3 Task Unit Bruiser, and uh, he runs a podcast right now and, and um, is a big strapping guy, black belt in jiu-jitsu, and he does a, he a high fat, low carb diet. So all I'm saying, guys, is one, you know, let's not turn everything into a WWE wrestling match. Um, it doesn't have to be that way here on YouTube. I think a lot of that comes because people misinterpret what people say. Two, um, you know, the high carb diet and, and, and the, the high fat, low carb diet, you know, nobody's saying that one is better than the other. These are, you know, alternative tools that you can use. Um, but there is significant evidence to suggest that there are benefits outside of the realm of fat loss uh, with ketosis. And that's what interests me because I not only want to be burning fat, I want to be burning fat while having my brain feel really good and while being super productive and while, um, you know, being able to do a whole lot of stuff and to have the convenience of not eating a bunch of times all day long and, and uh, um, having to refuel on glucose all the time. So that's my point, guys. Um, I, again, I'm nobody, and uh, you should always question me as much as you question anybody else um, and uh, question everything. Um, and that's what science really is. It's questioning. It's not taking anything as truth or proving anything. It's questioning everything. So I'll talk to you guys soon.